welcome to this tutorial we will be doing today on the process of DNA replication, a process in which our cells need to go through in order to divide and in this tutorial we'll be strictly focusing on the enzymes and steps involved in the DNA replication of eukaryotic cells. So we have our eukaryotic cell here with its nucleus which is going to be the center of this whole process. Now for our cells to be able to divide, first they need to create exact copies of their DNA, meaning the replicated chromosomes must be identical. This is because our DNA contains our genes and instructions for daughter cells to carry out their tasks, and without the DNA the new cell would not know what to do at all. And the way in which these chromosomes must be identical is in the code of their bases, so our nucleotides. And within biology we know that we have four bases in DNA, so let's take a quick look at each one and how they interact. So we have adenine here and we have guanine as well. These two being our purine bases, sharing a somewhat similar molecular shape. Now our last two are thymine and cytosine, these being our pyrimidine bases, again sharing a similar molecular shape. And the exact chemical structure of these bases is a little bit too complex, so just for the rest of this video we'll denote them as A, G, T and C. And while we are creating our DNA double helix, each one of these bases can only pair with one other base, so they're going to be complementary pairs. So A is always going to pair with T, and C is always going to pair with G. So A's to T's and C's to G's, and that's our complementary pairing of DNA. So now that we finally have all that out of the way, let's actually focus on DNA replication. And the first thing we're going to want to know is that it occurs during S phase of the cell cycle, which is the synthesis step in interphase. And it's also going to occur within our nucleus. So we have our nucleus here and we'll just zoom in and we can see that we have all of these uh, nucleotides kind of just floating around within the nucleoplasm. Now the DNA within our chromosomes is usually tightly regulated within a structure called chromatin, and for replication to occur we need this chromatin to begin to unravel. So if we have our chromosome here, we're going to see that the chromatin consists of uh, rolls or helices of nucleosomes, and if we zoomed out even further we'd see individual nucleosomes here, and as they begin to unravel we're going to actually see the DNA. So we are in the S phase of the cell cycle here, our chromatin is being unraveled and we have DNA available for replication. What we are going to see happen is a series of enzymes working in a very delicate process to create two strands of DNA in a semi-conservative manner, and I'll mention at the end of this video what I mean by semi-conservative. So this series of enzymes we have involved within DNA replication are going to be referred to as the replisome, and the first enzyme we will see as part of the replisome is the helicase enzyme. And our helicase enzyme is going to be responsible for unwinding this double helix structure and separating the strands of DNA. So we have our two individual strands of DNA here that's been separated by helicase, and we can see that the complementary pairs of bases were opposite each other along its whole length. So T to A, A to T, C to G, C to G. And we need to maintain this base sequence exactly as it is within the process of replication. Now we'll just note down as well that our helicase enzyme is going to be requiring ATP in its process of unwinding. So we have ATP being used by helicase. So because our base sequence needs to be maintained, 
each strand is going to act as a template for the synthesis of the new strands. And we also don't want our strands to come back together once helicase has done the hard work of separating them. So we'll have more proteins binding along the individual templates to prevent them from re-annealing. And we call these single strand binding proteins. And these single strand binding proteins are going to link to the template strands as helicase unwinds the double helix. And we call the area where all this is happening the replication fork. So simply the replication fork is where our DNA strands fork in different directions. And we can see here we'll draw a few single strand binding proteins. So on either side we can see them. And I'll just also highlight our replication fork, which is right here. So this is our replication fork. Now in our next step of DNA replication, what we're going to see happen is RNA primers binding to the template strands. And this is done by an enzyme called DNA primase, or just simply primase. So let's put a few DNA primase enzymes up here. So we can see that on one strand we have a single DNA primase, but on the other strand we have a couple. Why is that? That doesn't really make sense, right? Well, it's because of the activity of our next enzyme, which is DNA polymerase. But first, let's put these RNA primers down. And within RNA, we use a base called uracil instead of thymine. So let's zoom in here to get a better look. So we're zoomed in, we've got all the same enzymes and everything happening. So we've still got our DNA and our helicase and our template strands and also our DNA primase. So I just said within our primer we're going to be using a base called uracil instead of thymine. Again, that doesn't make sense. We want identical replication, not new letters involved, but don't worry, we're going to fix this soon. So our primase is going to be depositing A's anywhere we have T's from our nucleotide pool, and C's anywhere we have G's, and G's anywhere we have C's. But when we get to our A's, we want to pair thymine, but we can't at this point because it's an RNA primer. So we're going to see this new base, uracil. And I've just got that U in green here for uracil. And this whole primer region is going to be roughly 10 bases long per individual primer before we can have the activity of our next enzyme, which is the DNA polymerase, the powerhouse of this whole process. And the reason why our DNA polymerase is special is because it can only work in the 5 to 3 prime direction. Now this is going to lead to us having a leading strand and a lagging strand within DNA replication. Now if our leading strand goes from 3 to 5 prime and our lagging strand goes from 5 to 3 prime, we can kind of figure out straight away that DNA polymerase is going to be able to work on the leading strand continuously because DNA is anti-parallel, meaning one strand goes 3 to 5, the complementary strand will go 5 to 3, meaning they're running parallel but in opposite directions. And if you want to find out more about why we refer to the DNA strands as either 3 to 5 or 5 to 3 prime, have a look at my tutorial on DNA structure. But for now, just know that the DNA polymerase enzyme can only add bases in the 5 to 3 prime direction. So our leading strand. This is exactly what's going to happen. It's going to travel toward the replication fork from the primer. So where our RNA primer is, we're going to have this DNA polymerase, and it can continually add bases towards the replication fork. So it's not going to have any problems at all. It can just keep running along 
that template strand as the helicase continues to unwind it. Easy. Done. And just note as well that we're not depositing uracil anymore, so we're placing the correct DNA bases. Now the lagging strand. The lagging strand is going to fill in the primed segments. And the way it does this is by running from 5 to 3 prime. The only way it can run. So it's going to be going in this opposite direction. But if it continually goes in that direction, it's going to come to the end because helicase isn't at that end. So the DNA polymerase has to run in these small fragments that have been primed. And we call those fragments Okazaki fragments. So we can think of the lagging strand in this way. Helicase is going to continue to unwind and the leading strand DNA polymerase will run toward it no problem. But every now and then on the lagging strand as we have a certain amount of unwinding, primase will deposit an RNA primer there that the DNA polymerase can jump on and fill the fragment between the previous primer. So remembering once again that each of those areas is called an Okazaki fragment. So after this phase here, we're going to see a problem. So all of these enzymes have finished their job, but our backbone is still not connected. And it's not connected in more places on our lagging strand because we had more primers. But we can also see that these uracils are still here, and that's an even bigger problem because we need identical strands of DNA to create identical chromosomes. So we have a new enzyme to get rid of those uracils. And the new enzyme we have is DNA polymerase. But this is a different kind of DNA polymerase. It's not the same one that's going to be depositing bases. It's going to be one that's proofreading and replacing those incorrect bases. And I'll just point out quickly that we have another enzyme called RNase that will be removing those RNAs before the new DNA polymerase can deposit the correct bases. So we're depositing all the correct bases here by these new DNA polymerase enzymes. And we're going to see now that the strands are identical meaning that our chromosomes will almost be ready for the cell to start mitosis. So let's have a look at what we've got here now. We have T and then A, T and then A, A and then T, A and then T, C, G, C, G. So our strands are 100% identical now. If DNA polymerase has done its job correctly, and when it doesn't do it correctly, we call that mutation but we still need to join our backbone. And that brings in our last enzyme, which is DNA ligase. And DNA ligase is simply going to reanneal those strands and join the Okazaki fragments together. So we're going to see this happen up here. Now, if I just put a picture of our DNA ligases working on these points where our strands and backbones are not connected properly, so DNA ligase right here. They're doing their job and our backbone is complete, fixed, and our DNA is going to wind back up into our double helical structure, leaving us with two chromosomes. So chromosome one and chromosome two. That's going to mean our cell is ready to begin mitosis or meiosis and our individual copies of that chromosome will reconnect with the histone proteins to create the nucleosomes again as part of the chromatin. And we call this whole process semi-conservative DNA replication. Semi-conservative meaning within each new cell we're going to have one strand that is the parent strand, or came from the original cell, and one strand which is a daughter strand, or brand new strand that was synthesized during the DNA replication. And that's our whole process complete. I'm sorry for the length of the tutorial, but this is a very important concept, so I wanted to cover everything for you. Now, I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.